Shalom family, all praise to the Most High. We're now on day 48 of 100, almost halfway through this scripture discussion, motivation, sharpening journey. I pray that brothers and sisters are being encouraged. I pray that mindsets are changing. I pray that the Most High through His Holy Spirit is speaking to you about your particular situation on what it is that He has you to do next, to go to your next step in destiny, to go to your next step in victory, for you to move the next chess piece in the whole scheme of your life so that you can position yourself and your family to be at an advantage in these coming times, to be at a winning advancement in these times. So I pray that the scriptures that's been brought forth, the prayers that's been brought forth, that is helping to sharpen so that as we progress forward, the most high's remnant can rise. The elite, the elect, the overcomers can rise to the glory of the most high's name. So it's interesting how the most high will speak to you about many principles that's in his word and in his commands. And he'll use a lot of your memories and a lot of your life situations to speak to you about these principles. Same way with the Holy Spirit. The scripture says that the Ruach leads us into all truth. And many times what the Holy Spirit will do is take you to certain times in your life where things happen and use those situations as a teaching lesson of something that the Most High wants you to grasp on or practice in your current times. And I love when that happens because it really makes it a lot easier to understand. And there was one point in my life where the father brought it back to my remembrance and it taught me a lesson about how truly, truly this kingdom lifestyle and this walk that we're in, it's only meant for a chosen few to rise. It's such that Many will not enter into the kingdom. And it's such that those with the mindset to overcome will be inspired whenever they find out how narrow the way is that leads to eternal life. It won't be something that discourages them. It'll be something that makes them rise up to the challenge. It's a worthy cause. It's something that motivates them even more to say, I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to be one of those elect of the elect and elite of the elite that enters in. And I'm going to put my whole heart into this kingdom lifestyle. And it brought me back to a time when I was younger. It was me. It was a couple of my cousins and some of my friends that we had tried out for the basketball team. And what ended up happening, I ended up making the team, but then Some of my family didn't make it. And that made me really feel sorry for them that I made it and they didn't. You would think I'd be happy that I made it. But because we didn't all make the team together, which was the whole goal, we would go to the park and practice. We would always dribble up and down the street, practice. It was this uh, church right up the street called Logan Street Baptist. That we would always go up there to hoop. Whenever they would have church league and open uh, open gym, we would all always go there and hoop together and talk about making the team. So when we all didn't make it together, I felt bad for them. So to the point where I almost felt like quitting the team because they wasn't on the team with me. But then they was like, nah, L, don't, don't quit. You made it. Like, do your thing, man. So, but still... I felt bad for him and I still wanted them to make it. So I talked to the coach and I tried to get the coach to change his mind and let them on the team. And I'll never forget how the coach responded to me. Where he looked me dead in my eyes, cold hearted. And he said, if they don't make it, they don't make it. Everybody ain't champions. And then just walked away. And I was like, damn. At that time, being so young, it pissed me off when he said it. Because I'm still hurt that they didn't make the team. And it made me feel like he didn't even care. That I felt they was good enough to be on the team. I'm like, man, give them a chance. And he was so cold hearted about it. But later on, as I began studying the scripture, 
And as I begin listening to some of the things the Most High said, some of the things the Messiah would say, where he talks about the way to eternal life is narrow. Uh, wherever I started reading in the book of Second Esdras, chapter 9, where the Most High was talking about he values quality over quantity. Whenever I start looking back on scriptural stories about the days of Noah, how only eight people out of all the millions of people that was on the earth, only eight of them made it. When I start reading stories about whenever our people came out of Egypt, out of that whole generation that came out of Egypt, only two out of the millions made it in to the promised land. Joshua and Caleb, they was the only ones that was a part of that original group. Whenever I start reading stories about Gideon, how it went from over 30,000 soldiers to only 300 soldiers. All these things that I started learning about the Most High, it brought back to my memory that situation and how the coach cold heartedly was like, if they don't make it, they don't make it. Everybody ain't champions. So look, the Most High does not want anybody to perish. That's number one. So I'm not saying that the Most High is cold hearted. The scripture says that he doesn't want anybody to perish. That's the most high we serve. He's long suffering, full of mercy. In the book of Revelation, the scripture said even the Messiah gave Jezebel space to repent. That's how long suffering, merciful the most high and the Messiah are. So I'm not saying they're cold hearted. So it's not on the most high and the Messiah so much as its own people. It's them choosing not to be champions is them choosing not to make it because they have all the opportunity to make it but everybody ain't gonna make it everybody ain't champions so it gets to a point when you realize that a person has chosen not to be a champion that it is what it is if they don't make it they don't make it everybody ain't champions it even got to this point with Jeremiah, where Jeremiah had got to the point where the Most High told him, look, some of these people are unsalvageable. Some of these people are simply not going to make it. Stop crying over them. Stop praying for them. Some of them are lost causes. That's right there in Jeremiah chapter 7. Verse 15 and 16, the Most High told Jeremiah, and I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Those folks in those days, they got so unsalvageable. They became such lost causes that the Most High told Jeremiah, don't even pray for them. They ain't even worth it. That's deep. That's so deep. And this is what was brought back to my remembrance. And even in the New Testament, it talks about this, where it talks about the reprobates, the castaways, those who trample on the blood of the Messiah, those who follow the Messiah, they start out and then they put down the burden and turn away. And the Messiah said, they're not worthy of him if they walk away from him after picking up that burden and then put it down and walk away. If they don't take the blood of the Messiah seriously, they're not worthy of him. If they don't make it, they don't make it. Everybody ain't champions. This is what the Most High is talking about. This is what the Messiah is talking about. And now I see why the coach said what he said. So the main thing for us is not to become those people that ain't going to make it because there's going to be many that's like that. And in these times, man, whenever people see that something is the truth and they still fight against it, sometimes that's how people reveal that they just ain't going to make it. It could be the simplest truths that you present to people. And you realize, man, they probably just ain't going to make it. This is what the Messiah would often tell the apostles. 
If after the first or second warning or admonition, they still don't receive you, wipe the dust off. And as I look at things now and I see how simple people can be, how people get so easily seduced, pimped and manipulated by emotions and lies, I really start to understand and it makes me pray to the Most High to say, Father, if there's any of that in me, please take that out of my heart. And that should be your prayer as well. If there's anything in me that would make me be one of these people that's easily deceived, Father, please take that out of my heart. Because at the same time, we don't want to be like that self-righteous man in the Messiah's parable that he said, I fast two times a week. I do this. I do that. I'm better than this sinner over here. We don't want to have that mindset either. But damn, sometimes whenever you look at some of our people, you thank the Most High that he woke you up. But at the same time, it's sad that some are lost causes and some just ain't going to make it. And that's not judging nobody's salvation because we got to continue to work out our own salvation as well, lest we fall from the way. But this is just a fact, family. And as you see these things, it should motivate you to not become one of those lost causes. One of those people that doesn't want to be a champion. Because whenever I look at these times, right? We live in a time where the enemy is doing everything he can to crush people by poverty, to financially destroy people. So if people seeing that the enemy is using poverty as a weapon against them, if that doesn't motivate them to hustle, if that doesn't motivate them to have an abundance mindset, if that doesn't motivate them to come up with a strategy and a system and a plan to lift their family and themselves out of poverty, when they see that's what the enemy's trying to do to them, they see all the false doctrines that they're putting out there to make people not want to pursue financial stability. Whenever they see the truth and then they still don't want to become more financially secure for themselves and for their household, then maybe they just ain't going to make it. We live in a time where the enemy is doing everything he can to put forth all these false doctrines and to cast truth to the ground, like it says in the book of Daniel. So if that doesn't motivate people to search the scriptures for themselves, stop believing in these online personalities, stop getting seduced, finessed, swindled out of their salvation, getting tossed to and fro by all these strange doctrines. If them seeing all the deception doesn't make them want to read the scripture cover to cover for themselves, fast and pray to hear from the most high for themselves in this time of all this deception, I guess they just ain't going to make it. We live in a time where the school systems are indoctrinating the children to be anti-Messiah, to be confused about their gender, to teach them to be rebellious. So if that doesn't motivate parents and families to take their children's education in their own hands and to not let the school system destroy them and they fight against you for telling you, for you giving them ideas on how to keep their children out of that system and they get mad at you instead of getting mad at the system that's destroying their children's mind, you know what? They probably just ain't going to make it. We live in a time right now where war, plague, tribulation, civil war, all these things, it's a very real threat. So if that doesn't motivate people to learn new skill sets, to form survival groups, to learn survival methods, to sharpen their discernment, to do whatever they need to do for when tragedy and tribulation comes to put themselves in a position to survive if they don't get motivated by seeing the condition of the world and how all these things are a threat maybe they just ain't gonna make it 
We live in a time where the enemy's doing all that he can to keep people from making it to the kingdom. He's doing everything he can to keep people from making it to the kingdom with the distractions, with the temptations, doing everything he can to keep people from making it to the kingdom. So just by that fact alone, by people seeing how hard the enemy is working to keep them from making it to the kingdom, if that don't motivate them to do all they can to endure, to make sure they make it to the kingdom because the enemy's trying so hard to keep them out the kingdom, then maybe they just ain't going to make it. And it gets to a point, family, where you are so busy carrying your own burdens. You are so busy working out your own salvation. You are so busy leading your own household. It comes a time where just like the parable of the five wise and five foolish bridesmaids, you don't have time to be giving out none of your oil because what you're dealing with is almost taking all your energy to deal with. So these folks who don't want to make it like the same ones that was in Jeremiah day, these folks who don't want to prosper, these folks that don't want to win, these folks that anytime you present to them something that can better them spiritually, physically, mentally, they fight against it and try to turn it into a, ba a debate. You know what? If they don't make it, they don't make it. Because it comes a time you're not being unmerciful, you're not being cold hearted, but you just don't got no time for loser mindsets and loser people. You don't got no time for people who don't want it as bad as you do. You trying to connect with the elect, the elite and the remnant and the overcomers. It's just like in the days whenever our people came out of Egypt. Let's say you was in your tent and in all the tents around you was just a bunch of murmurers. So you have a decision. Are you going to join with the murmurers and start murmuring and complaining like they murmuring and complaining? Because if you chose to do that, the most high would have considered you wicked with the rest of the murmurers. And then he would have marked you as somebody not worthy to enter in. Or would you have seen all those murmurers knowing that the Most High was not pleased with them and moved your tent somewhere else? Like, I got to get away from these murmurers and complainers because the Most High's wrath is going to be towards these people and I don't want to get swallowed up in their judgment. I'm taking my tent and I'm moving somewhere else away from all these murmurers and these losers. That decision right there alone could have saved your life in the days of the first exodus and that decision alone right there will save your life in this next exodus because even right now we're surrounded by these same type of people who only want to murmur debate complain be contrary they only want to stay yoked to the babylonian mindset and babylonian spirit they don't want to win they don't want you to win they don't want to do better they don't want victory success and destiny they're losers and some of them, that's all they'll ever damn be. It sounds harsh, but it's real. And this is what the Messiah was talking about in 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 22, where he said, so let the multitude perish that was born in vain. That's deep. So even the Most High was saying that, look, most of these people were born for nothing. They'll never amount to nothing. There's some people on this planet that's like that. Don't let that be you. Don't be one of these people the Most High is talking about in 2nd Ezra 9.22 or that Jeremiah was talking about. Because with what I teach and the goal and aim of my ministry is caused me to make enemies in the Hebrew Israelite community. There's people that if you could believe they get pissed off by me being motivating and encouraging to our people. How crazy is that? But it reminds me a lot like in the scripture where it talked about when Joshua and Caleb was trying to motivate and encourage our people, telling them we are well able to conquer the land. When all the losers was like, no, we can't. There's giants over there. We can't defeat them. Caleb and Joshua was trying to motivate and encourage the people. And guess what niggas tried to do? 
They tried to stone them. So I understand the spirit I'm up against. I'm up against a bunch of loser mindset. I get it. And I'm cool with that because guess what? If they don't make it, they don't make it. Everybody ain't champions. As for me and my house, I'm going to have that Joshua and Caleb mindset. I'm going to pick up my tent and move away from the losers and the murmurers and the complainers. I, I want to be like Joshua and dwell in the tabernacle of Elohim. That's where I want my tent to be at. I want to be with the winners. I want to be with the overcomers. But you got people that get pissed off about motivation and encouragement. I suppose they'd rather I talk about Esau, Deuteronomy 20, 28, UFOs, sitting around jacking off the Deuteronomy 28 and trying to predict World War III all day. You know, all that goofy shit. That, that's what they want me to do, which is what most of them are on. No. This is victory, success, destiny ministries. Over here, we strive to dominate. Over here, we manifest wealth. Over here, we manifest abundance. Over here, we keep the Most High's laws and commands. Over here, we know that we can do all things through the Most High. We know that all things are possible with the Most High. Nothing is impossible with the Most High. Over here, we striving for our highest eternal purpose. Over here, we don't got no black ass pity parties and victim stories. We got testimonies of overcoming. We got testimonies of winning. We got testimonies of overcoming the struggle and the suffering. We got testimonies of overcoming the pain. That's what we're on over here. I don't know what else they got going on in these other places, but that's what we're doing here. And if that's not what you want, get the hell on somewhere then. Because if they don't make it, they don't make it. Everybody ain't champions. But I want all the brothers and sisters that's connected with this ministry to be the champions, to be the elect of the elect, the elite of the elite, those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, those who have victory, success, and destiny in this life and in the life to come. So if you on that nigga shit and victim pity party, loser mindset, loser doctrine, get the hell away from us. Please go the hell on. We don't want you here. We don't want you in the comment section. I don't even want your ass listening to the videos. Get the hell on. Unless you're willing to repent. Unless you're willing to have your mind transformed. But if you're only here for a debate, if you're only here to ask dumb questions, if you're only here to try to seduce and swindle other brothers and sisters out of their salvation, you got to get the hell up out of here. Because if they don't make it, they don't make it. Everybody ain't champions. Or like the angel in the book of Revelation said, let he who is righteous be righteous still. Let he who is filthy be filthy still. Let he who is holy be holy still. I'm here to speak to the champions. I'm here to speak to the overcomers. I'm here to speak to the winning team. I'm here to speak to those who are in the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. I'm here to speak to those who have washed their garments in the blood of the lamb and they wear the all white linen before the throne, which is the righteousness of the saints. I'm here to speak to those who want to minister to the prisoner, the orphan, the widow, the fatherless. I'm here to minister to those men who want to be mighty leaders of their households and provide for their wives and their children and build up wealth for their children's children who want to secure the bloodline, secure the bag, who want to overcome sin, Satan, who want to overcome the bottomless pit and the abyss, who want to overcome any generational curses in their bloodline, who want to overcome all the distractions of the world, who want to be changed into a champion. I'm here for those who want to go from a loser to a winner. I'm here for those who want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'm here for those who want to pray in the spirit. I'm here for those who want to receive revelation, understanding from the most high, who want to fast, who want to have a pure heart. I'm here for those who want to put up numbers for the kingdom and bear major fruit for the most high and to be motivated to be great in the kingdom. I'm here for those who have that mindset. Anybody else that's not on that, get the hell on. But for those who want to make it. 
the champions, the overcomers. Greatness awaits you and greatness awaits us. So let's endure for the crown of life. Let's endure to receive the stone from the Messiah. Let's endure to become a pillar in the temple of Elohim and to have the seal of Elohim written upon our foreheads. In these last times, let's be those chosen few that Daniel prophesied that would do exploits in the name of the Most High. Exploits meaning legendary achievements, all for the glory of the Most High. Let's be that remnant that is prophesied about in the book of Zechariah where it says, even the one who is weakest among them will be like David. That's a mighty team where even the weakest man in the pack is like David. That's the team I want to be on. I want to be of that remnant. I want the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. I want to win. I want to, I want to be uh, righteous and wealthy. So for everybody else whose mind is on that, join me as I join the most high and let's endure. Let's put up numbers for the kingdom. Let's bear fruit so that when we stand before the most high and the Messiah, we will not have our hands empty. We will have assisted in winning souls. We will have done his work. And then they will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because you've been faithful over these earthly things, now I'm going to make you a ruler over mightier things. That's the whole goal of this, to have righteous ambition, to win. Think about all our ancestors that went through so much. I'm not going to be one of these Negroes that lets the Gentiles come in to a nation that we built and then sit there and outshine the Most High's people? No. No, sir. You're not going to come over here in the land that we built and then try to flex on us and rise up higher than us? No. I'm going to make sure that I'm living in the same million dollar neighborhoods as y'all. So whenever I'm jogging through the neighborhood and you Indians and Asians and white folks is looking at me crazy like, what's he doing here? I'm going to look you right back in your eyes like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm right up here in the same economic rank as y'all. Matter of fact, probably got more money than y'all. Yeah. And serving the most high. OK. Yes. Yes. You not finna come over here in land that we built and then outshine the most high's people. No, I'm going to be right there standing eye to eye with you in the same upscale restaurant you at. Yeah, we in here, too. Israelites up in here, too. Yes, sir. I'm going to be looking you right in your eye like, uh-huh, I know y'all ain't want us up in here, but I'm here. And you got to deal with the Most High's people right up in here amongst you where you didn't want us to be. And you're going to have to respect the greatness. Even if it's at the workplace, yeah. You're going to have to respect the fact that we're the top performers. You could, you're just going to have to be satisfied with second or third place. Because as long as Israel is up in here, we always going to be on the throne. We always going to be the top performer. We always going to be the top salesman. We always going to shine the brightest. And you're going to have to deal with that. You're not going to come over here and outshine us on land that we build everything on. No, I'm finna outdo you every time. And not for ego, but for glory of the most high. So that you don't go back to your false gods, your false Indian and Asian gods and whatever it is that you're worshiping and give them glory because you feel like they've given you a victory over us. Nah, you're going to have to accept your subservient position underneath the children of Israel because every room I walk in, I'm walking in there to win. I'm walking in there to remind y'all that my Elohim is greater than your Elohim and you will never outshine me. Or my people. That's the mindset I'm on. I pray that's what you're on as well. So let's go be undefeated in the name of the Most High. All esteem to the Most High Elohim. All praise to the Ancient of Days. To Yeshua, the Invincible Warrior Messiah. Who conquered death, hell, and the grave. Who shall soon return to behead all of the enemies of the Most High. And put his foot on their skull. To fulfill the prophecy spoken in the Garden of Eden. That Hebrews will be on top. The righteous will be on top. So be it. Hallelujah. Let's go.